What's up everybody, welcome to a brand new series which is the Soya yeah unboxing experience. Right here guys, we are going to be opening some of the greatest sewing machines accessories that the industry has to offer. And the one that we have today is kind of special to me. This is the Juki TL2010. Now, as some of you may know, we have recently become Juki dealers, but this is a particular machine that I've personally wanted to try out for quite some time. So I'm gonna pull up the box right now. So it is a heavy machine here. So this right here, inside this box, brand new Juki TL2010. What I'm gonna do right now is pull up my handy dandy scissors. I'm gonna cut the straps off this thing and we're gonna take a look inside. Now, I'm probably gonna have to stand up for this and we're gonna get lots of different angles here, but let's just open it up. My all purpose scissors here. Don't know what's the best way to get it out of the box. So far, pretty clean fully compacted into that little box there. We got quite a lot of stuff here. We're not gonna pay attention to that right now. Let's just see the sewing machine. Lots of brand new things here. Let's get everything opened up. So wrapped in a plastic here. Ooh, look at that machine. So as far as I can tell here, everything so far is metal. So. I like that about a sewing machine, having a full metal machine here. Let me just clean off my desk and let's go through a little bit of a what to expect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull everything out of the plastics here. Let's see. So first thing, okay, sewing machine dust cover here it's made out of it feels like a pleather okay so it it is feels nice i'm gonna be completely honest i've never used one if, if you're gonna make or have a dust cover make one you, we're creative people you can make a cool dust cover okay next thing here before we get into the sewing machine i really want to go into what comes in the box and what to expect, we, I have found that when you're trying to research sewing machines, it's hard to find what to expect in the box. So, let's just find out what's exactly in this box. That's a huge, huge slide on table. I'm not gonna get into the slide on table because I wanna do all the machine at one time. Knee lift, now if you guys aren't knee lift users, try these out, absolutely love a good knee lift. Foot control, this is a special foot control though. It actually has the scissor button pre-built into the foot control. So what I mean by that, when you push down, it goes forwards, right? It, it turns on the machine. When you heel click the bottom, it actually cuts your thread, which I'm gonna show you guys that feature here in just one second. Super cool, I, I really like this so far. Owner's manual, which is nice and you also have a warranty card in the back. Make sure when you grab a machine that you fill out your warranty card, that is important. Now let's go into kind of the bag of tricks here, which you, you're probably gonna need to come up closer. Let's get into the bag of tricks here. Now this is your accessories that come with your machine. And I don't really count the slide on table or the knee lift or the power cord as accessories. Those are kind of like, should come in the box. These are your accessories here. Very first thing there is some sewing machine oil. Now this machine will need oil. Um, full mechanic machine needs a little bit of oil. They're gonna start us off with some organ needles here. Um, as far as I know, you can use any needle, but they probably got a partnership with organ. Um, organ's a great needle, hands down. It, it is good needle. Now, I like the spool cap here, a little bit bigger and it only comes in one side, so it's a bigger cap here. Let me just throw that onto the machine, that way I don't forget it. Nice. Now, let's see what other feet we have here. Okay, little surprise for everyone. This right here is the Juki walking foot. It comes in the box, which is a nice thing. You don't have to go out and try to find one of these. I think everyone should have a walking foot. Um, you never know when you need one. There's a couple of things here that people probably just overlook, but it's good to throw them in there. 
you got a little brush, a little lint brush. And it's got like a little pick at the end, so if you need to help pick something up, that's nice to have. It comes with a total of four extra bobbins, one in the machine, and these are class L bobbins. So they're a little bit bigger than the class 15 bobbin, which is what most people have. Um, I personally like class L. Um, they're always metal, or 95% of the time, they're always metal. Next thing is, we overlook these all the time. It's nice to have a good screwdriver here. What do you use this for? It looks like the top here can pull off. I'm assuming the bottom can pull off. Um, we might get to that in this video, who knows. This right here is something that everyone I always know overlook. This is a specialty tool, meaning it's just the right shape to fit on your needle plate to change out your needle plate if you ever had to, or if you got something really stuck in there, this is the best way to get it out. It's the perfect fit for that. And I'll show you guys that here in just a second. Next thing as well, comes standard. Guys, this is just standard in the box. That right there is your free motion foot. Standard in the box, like I said. So we have a walking foot, we have a free motion foot. Not only that, already on the machine is my quarter inch foot. So pretty much all my basics bases are covered here, especially because I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video. The TL2010Q is a straight stitch only machine. So it can only go forwards and backwards and a little bit of free motion in there. So nice that that's kind of covering all my bases there. Next thing here, guys, is this foot looks weird and we wouldn't really recognize what it is just right off the bat. But that right there is a form of a zipper foot. So what's cool about this is you can actually adjust how far the foot's moving. And so you can push it right up against your zipper and make that adjustment there if you so choose and adjust for zippers, especially left and right side, because you could sew on either side of a zipper. So that's a really cool feature and it comes directly in the box for you. So that's as far as accessories go, that's all the accessories that are going to come inside the box, which for a straight stitch only machine, I can't imagine what more you would really need or want. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do next, I've got my little bag of goodies here, already packed up here. If I was gonna do something, I would make a little bag for this or have a little container for this. It doesn't come with one, um, but I like to keep all my parts together. What I'm gonna do is just set these down aside here and let's jump into the actual machine itself. You can see it has some bare bones features here, which is exactly what this machine is known to do. It is a phenomenal straight stitch only machine, but I like to have some modern features in there. First thing though is a vertical spool pins. So it doesn't matter if you have bigger cones or smaller cones, it's going to work with the system here. Jumping to the very front of the machine, right here is your stitch length. What's unique about this machine is it goes from zero all the way up to a six, which most machines have like a five or a 5.5 millimeter stitch length. This one goes all the way up to a sixth, which would be a phenomenal basting stitch if you're basting your quilts and things like that. Another nice function here is you see the little blue knob here, blue knob. That's your speed control. So you can actually change how fast you want the machine to be sewing when you are full throttle there on the gas pedal or your foot control. If you're not a super fast sewer, you can just tone it down a little bit. Or if you want to be a really fast sewer, speed this up. Next little feature here, this right here, people always forget about reverse because we normally just go forward, but it's good to have a back stitch. You just pull down the lever here and that will automatically engage your reverse. All mechanical machines, when you actually are pulling down on that, it is actually doing a mechanical change to then go backwards, which is cool. Last thing on this side of the machine that I want to note is this little switch here. That's how you drop your feed dogs for free motion. So just like that, feed dogs dropped, and I turn it back the other direction and feed dogs lift back up. Again, mechanical, listen real close here. Hear that? Mechanically, we have dropped the feed dogs. And listen again, mechanically, we've lifted the feed dogs back up. So full mechanical there. Now, something I want everyone to pay attention to, especially on this machine here, is this little portion right here. Now, everyone's used to having a tension disc inside of their sewing machine and not on the outside of their sewing machine. So, which I'm gonna show everyone how to thread this here in just one second. But you have a tension disc right here at the top and you have a tension disc right here at the bottom. The bottom one here, when you tighten it down, it's really gonna get tight or it's really gonna get loose. 
This right here is to do like some micro adjustments if you want to just change things a little bit or if you're having problems with the machine um, when you cut your thread like too much of it's being cut, this helps a little bit with that as well. But you have two tension discs, both of them on the outside of the sewing machine. In my opinion and what I've seen is these are amazing. They're really easy to keep clean because you don't have to try to get like lint brushes and all that into your machine. Keeping them clean makes it real simple. You can actually just like brush them out, super simple. Um, and you can actually pull them apart and see inside them if you feel like something is stuck in them, which is nice to just have on the outside of the sewing machine. Coming up next though, is this presser foot is mechanical and it's on the back. Let me show you the lever here. Lever here on the back, lifts up the presser foot and drops the presser foot. Normal plain Jane kind of sewing machine there. One feature that I forgot to mention, but we're gonna get into it here in a little bit. This does have a scissor and an up and down button on it, but we're not gonna get into that quite yet. Next thing here, the machine has a little needle threader or a needle assist on it. So if you are in the upright position, you can use this to help thread your needle. Now, is it the, you just click a button and it automatically threads itself? No, it does work pretty good though. And to make sure your needle's in the upmost right position, you just click the needle up button, it pulls it up, and then it works pretty much every time there. Now, as far as bobbins go, or your bobbin case, different here is that your bobbin case is inside of here. This little metal plate here lifts up, and your bobbin case is inside. It's not really hard to get to. Um, it gets used to it. You, you will have to get used to it a little bit. But you have your L-style, bobbin case and your L style bobbin. Very, very simple there. If you're used to an old school machine, most old school machines had a bobbin case that looked just like this. But if you're not, it clips in. You don't just drop the bobbin in. You put it in your bobbin case and it clips into place. Listen, it's actual, you can hear the click into place there. Now, before people get real technical with me or ask too many questions before we dive onto the actual functions of this machine, I'm going to just do something that most people won't do on camera, which is let's take our screwdriver and show you the inside. Got my screwdriver. There's two screws. I'm going to pull it out of the way. There are two screws on the top here, which will let us see inside of this sewing machine. What I'm looking for here, because they say that it is a metal machine. Let's prove it. And you know what? I always give everyone the benefit of the doubt too here of that. They have a little piece of plastic in there that isn't an actual function or it's like your, your um, needle up and down sensor or something like that. Like I'm looking for the mechanics of the machine. So machine here, let's pull this thing out. Comes off. There is an electrical opponent here. So look here. Look down inside there. So that's grease, guys. That's very normal to find in a sewing machine. Full metal connection points. That's nice to see. This right here is called a timing belt. Most of the time, generally speaking, they're plastic because if something were to fail in the machine, you want something like a timing belt to fail instead of your main gears here. So love that about it. Now, let's see on the other side. Let's open this up. Obviously you got some springs there, you got some wires for the lights, but that right there, for at least from the top view, looks like a metal sewing machine. Now people are gonna say, what's all this up here? Now, this right here is your electrical components, which means your light bulb, your needle up and down, your scissor cutting, that's all being housed right here. Which, being completely honest, I love how compact it is. I also love that it's all right here. It's not wires going off everywhere. Like all your electricals here and you can see clearly where each wire goes. That's a big plus for a, from a technician standpoint. Um, some of you may be aware or maybe you're not. I'm also a technician for these brands of sewing machines. So technician point of view, thank you for keeping everything clean and simple. Now, since we're here, it's time to look at the bottom. 
because we want to make sure that this sewing machine, that when you're buying the sewing machine, that you know for sure what you're getting. That's kind of the point of this series here. But let's look at the bottom of this machine here. Okay, again, full metal, metal bushings, metal springs, metal about everything. People are gonna question on this piece right here, that's again a timing belt. You want those to be plastic because if anything breaks on a machine, like let's say you're really forcing a machine, you want a part that's easily replaceable to be the fall point and not your main gear or something like that. So absolutely love that as far as a technician standpoint, it's this little screw right here I pull out the pin, I can pull that out and put a new one in. Super, super easy there. So, as far as their claim to fame of this is a metal machine, I'm going to tell you that 96% of the machine is metal. The only thing that I see that have been plastic are this piece right here, which is exactly what it should be. I see a little bit of plastic and wires right here, which again, you don't want metal parts around your, your electronics because that would make it make them not work. So have to have the plastic there. And the only other piece of plastic that I see, which is not important, is right here, this back is a venting back. So this is where your motor's at. This is where all the hot air is blowing out of. If it was metal, obviously the metal would heat up and then cause overheating of the motors. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a metal machine. Their claim to fame here is it's true, which is nice to know. So what I'm gonna do real quick, guys, is I'm gonna just slap all the pieces back onto this really quickly, and then we're going to sew on it and give you kind of my opinion on how it sews. So everyone, got the machine in front of me. I'm gonna now just kind of assemble it together what I think it should look like. First thing though I'm gonna remember is to take out my bobbin case because I do need to wind a bobbin for this. But I've got my slide-on table. It's actually got these really nice clips that are the feet. Not sure how well we can show these. I mean, clips and clips and clips. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six different points of contact for this slide on table. I'm gonna put it on here. And this is something that it tells us to do is that if it doesn't line up perfectly with your machine, um, because it's always gonna be a little bit off up and down, you can actually just adjust the feet on the bottom to make it line up properly. So I'm gonna do that right now. So absolutely could adjust all this to make that line up, but it fits pretty snug there. Something that's cool, this is a little feature that you can show here, is that this has a little door on it that opens, which is cool. And people are like, why does it have a door? You open up the door so that then you can get into your bobbin and be able to get your whole hand in there. That's, that's a smart one. That's smart thinking there. I like that instead of having to pull this table off every single time. But for the sake of video and for the space though, love the table, I'm gonna pull it off, that way people can get a better view of the machine here. So let's just jump into winding a bobbin here and getting the machine plugged in. It takes a normal outlet, which is nice. And it's kind of like the normal common sewing machine cord. So I'm gonna just plug this in here. Plugged in, I'm gonna turn this thing on. Now that's interesting to see here that I was expecting yellow light, it's actually white light. So that must be a LED. So it's got an LED light here, it gives you a, quite a bit of light coming off of here. So guys, to do the bobbin here, let me just put that on. It goes around right to the top of the bobbin winder. Thread goes all the way up to the top. We've got a tension disc here that I'm gonna turn around. And I'm gonna spin this around. I like to do a couple dozen times. I feel like it always works if I do that. With this particular bobbin winder, the actual bobbin winding, like to tell it when to stop, clips into the bobbin, which is kind of cool. So what I mean by that is this piece, this little piece right here, falls directly into the bobbin. You just push it right into the bobbin. Which then when the bobbin fills up, it moves this mechanism backwards and then stops it when it's time to be stopped. And we're gonna wind ourselves a very first bobbin. Now, fast. Now you're kind of hearing a, like a sound. That is because there's metal bobbins with a metal guide here. So the guides and the bobbins touch a little bit. That's very normal. That's fast. 
That's real fast. That's really, really fast. So, that's kind of cool. I don't need a full bobbin, so you can just stop and unclip it there. I'm gonna just break the thread there. Now, every bobbin and every sewing machine is a little bit different. I'm always gonna tell you to refer back to the manual for your, which how your bobbin goes in and all that kind of stuff. But just loading my bobbin here, putting it in, closing that up, that way I know I'm fully threaded. Now, I'm a knee lift kind of person, so I'm going to put my knee lift in there. So what a knee lift is, for those of you who don't know, there's a hole right here on the front of your sewing machine where this clips into. When I pull on the lever here, it actually lifts up my foot control. So what you do is you put it next to your knee, hence the word knee lift, and you just lift it up when you're done. So I'm an absolute huge fan of the knee lift because you never really have to touch your sewing machine to get your fabric out and all that. You just use your knee there, makes it super, super simple. So now I've got this set up, I've got my presser foot ready to go. I'm gonna just thread up this machine. Now the threading on this machine is a little bit different. Again, I'm gonna refer you back to your user manual on this. Um, we're actually gonna make a video on just how you thread this machine because it is different than your normal sewing machine. But I'm going to just get through here really quick. So needle up, needle down. So I know that I'm in the bottom position, top position, because I want to see how well the needle threader works on this machine. So I'm gonna pull that all the way down. I'm gonna pull this all the way down. Pull it around and clip it through and it does work. So super simple, um, not, not too complicated if you're familiar with this kind of system, um, but it does take a minute to learn how to do it. I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread just cause that's my nature of things here. I've got a little just piece of fabric just to test out the sewing machine itself. Dropping this down here i put my foot control down here at the bottom. So let's see what super speed looks like on this machine. That's fast, okay? Really, really fast machine. I wanna say the RPMs on this, or reps per rotation and all that kind of, or stitches per rotation is like a thousand. So that's quite a lot. As far as stitch quality goes, I would say that's a really nice straight stitch there. I'm a big fan of straight stitch machines. Most of what we do in the quilting industry is straight stitch only. Just so you can see, button, needle up, needle down. I like that feature. I'm a big fan of that feature. You also have a scissors button, which means I click the button and it's cut both top and bobbin threads. Super simple. But let's talk about that foot control for just one minute here. I'm a big fan of this. Um, Juki's had this technology for quite a while now. So has Bernina. But what it is, when I push down on this, the machine will sew. Normal foot control. But if I push down on this portion of it, when I click down, you hear that. The thread cutter engages and it has cut my thread. I love heel click because between a knee lift and a heel click, you really never have to touch anything on your sewing machine while you're sewing. I'll give you guys kind of an example here. Let's say we were sewing some pieces together. I start sewing. I finish my seam, heel click, and listen, all mechanical. I lift up my pressure foot with my knee lift. And I'm ready to my next piece. So I don't really have to touch anything on the sewing machine. Then if we want to get back to sewing, knee lift, put my fabric underneath, drop it down, start sewing. And again, it does have a reverse, guys, with the heel click and it cuts my thread, which is absolutely phenomenal. Love those features. So let's talk a little bit about this machine in a whole. I absolutely love straight stitch machines. I think they are amazing machines. As far as the Juki TL2010Q, um, I would say that this is a Soya approved machine for sure. I like how they made the point that is is a metal machine and 
it is. Like we've just proven that it is a metal machine here. I like how you have pressure foot controls. You have your stitch length controls. You got your scissors, you got your up, down, but you don't have a kajillion other bells and whistles because that's not what this is designed to do. L style bobbin, I think that's a great to have a little bit bigger of a bobbin because with a machine like this, you should be stitching quite a bit. So as far as the normal retail price on this machine is $1,699, which for me guys, with what the machine is, I think that's a little bit high. I would buy the machine for that price, honestly, because it's a phenomenal machine. But Juki has kind of these no hassle pricing, which means if you came to me and said, hey, I want the machine, what's the best you can do? This machine's gonna go $999. So quite a bit of savings. And I would say that is way undervaluing this machine. I would put this machine at probably the $1,500 category, but you can pick it up for $999. Absolutely love that. I love how they've kind of become a people's machine. I don't know how many times we get in the comments, I saw on the Juki 2010Q. So absolutely phenomenal little machine. I would say it's so yeah approved and everything that Juki has said about the machine is true. Forward, backwards, showing machine. You got the little features that matter, scissors, needle up and down, all that kind of stuff. On top of, it's a full metal machine. If you are looking to grab a sewing machine, check out sewyerquilting.com. We have some of the best pricing in the industry. But on that note, guys, please, if you are an owner of the TL2010Q, let us know down in the comments below. That way, if anyone has questions, they can get answers from the public. We understand that since we are also a online store and a brick and mortar, some people feel like this is a sales pitch to you. In no way do we want that. We just wanna make sure you are confident and that you have a wonderful unboxing experience. Thank you so much guys for watching and we'll see you next week with the next sewing machine. See ya.